Hello there folks, well today it's a Midland 2001 which we're going to be doing Now I've got two of these, I bought this one a few weeks ago on eBay came with two factory mics, unknown state, no power lead, £8 and it's in better condition than the other sample that I've got and do you know what, I fancy putting one of these in my car seeing as I own them both, I, I'm fully entitled to do that they just seem to work so well. Right, now power leads are a problem. Is this the last one I've got or is it next to the last one I've got? The wholesalers have stopped doing them. The only people who are doing them are the American firm called Workman. So who does Workman products in the UK? I don't know. Knights have got them for £9.99. And it looks like we're going to be biting the bullet and paying £9.99 in the future. So, we'll get this connected up and I'll be back with you. Okay, so this one is February 1982. It's a bit bashed in at the back, but it's certainly better than the other two, which I'll also show you. Here we have got the other two with leads dangling out of them. I'm not prepared to have radios like that in the car. So we'll need to recover sockets off um, scrap chassis which I can find. Uh, December 1981 for the lower one. The one which we've tested and it doesn't work, November 1981. So I'm actually preparing the February 82 one, which is the newest one, um, for this demonstration. Now, going to these other two, which I'll eventually do something with. Um, I'm not quite sure what's happened to the case on that lower one but I think it needs a little trip to the vice in the workshop I don't know what's happened to the colour of the other one I think it's had a rather interesting respray I'm sure I used to have a Datsun 120Y which was that colour right we'll put those down I've, I've that bright one I think in my car and we'll take the lids off this one and we'll see what greets us and while I was doing that, the telephone rang and some automated voice asked if I wanted to buy solar panels. I couldn't talk back to it and say I didn't have any money to do so. Now, as I've opened this setup, every one of the screw was a self-tapper. And so that means that all these um, Yeah, I was gonna say bushings, wrong word, can't think of the right tappings are now in too far a state. What we do is to carefully hammer these with a ball pane hammer in the other workshop and then re-tap them for M3.5 so we can put the proper screws in because it's unacceptable to have self-tappers in this type of radio. Now then we'll start with the VCO on these. I'm not expecting it to be out. I'm going to switch the radio on. Oh, for once the uh, the meter lamp works and I can hear it receiving so that's a good start but we'll still do the VCO okay I continue to get asked questions on this VCO on this chassis the test point and I've just had to scrape a bit of wax away the test point is just there it says TP in as a hole and the idea is if you prod sharp enough you'll be able to pick up the voltage by putting the prod into that hole. Well, Mark, the prods I use aren't sharp enough to do that. And so what I'm going to have to do is turn the board over the other way and find it on the other side. I will just check, though. No, I can't, uh, I can't do that. I'm going to turn the radio over. So what I've now had to do is to turn the radio over. It turns out that on this particular one, if I can just put the prod on these pads here, this is where the test point should be, the other side. I think it's that one just there. Sorry about the air conditioning coming in at the background, it's a bit uh, warm today. And this isn't fitted with those components. So what we're going to do is to go on resistor 89, which is that pad there. So I'll just zoom out so you can see the meter. We're on channel 1 on receive.
and it's supposed to be 2 volts on channel 1 and I'll go on transmit and it's supposed to be something round about what it is something round about uh, it, it needs to be more than 0.9 to lock so that's fine now we're going to go to channel 40 and make sure it's in lock and it needs it really wants to be between 2 and 4 volts well it's 4.18 that's fine it's in lock and we'll go to transmit and it's 3 volts in transmit and that's absolutely fine so of course you would adjust I mean just uh, this is set the other way around you would adjust the coil there L116 but it's never been touched I didn't expect it was going to need touching but just to go over what we need to do that's why I've just done that demonstration for you so I'm not going to return the check set back to channel 20 so we can carry on with the tune up start with L107 so we'll put the radio into transmit and straight away we're greeted with three watts exactly so we're going to start with L107 3.1 watts L109 I'm just going to go back to the first one, 107 and then we'll go on to L108 still 3.1 watts and then we'll move on to L110 which is the open construction coil at the back still 3.1 watts and then we'll move over to L110 which has got wax in it so I'll just have to switch my soldering iron on and, uh, in order to melt the wax there are the speaker leads which I'll try not to do anything silly with still 3.1 watts and then L115 Tidy that up at the same time. Three point two watts. And that is it. I'm just going to do these off the camera again just to make sure I've got the absolute maximum. So we've now peaked that at 3.2 watts. And again, as I said before, this is a commercial power meter, so it reads correct watts. So I'm sure it's about 6 good buddy watts. The point is that's in spec. 3.2 is in spec. What we're now going to just do is make sure the radio is on frequency. It should be 27.79125. It's 27.79081. Now that's a little bit low. It's within acceptable tolerance, but it is a little bit low, so we may as well alter that. And the crystal reference crystal to 10.24 is the one just there, and the trimmer is the red part just to the left of it. So we'll just pull, try and pull that up. Crystals drop naturally with age, so it's to be expected. 103, 117, 120, 123, 125, 126. So that's now spot on frequency and that's absolutely what we're looking for. The next thing we're going to do is just going to get the little oscillator out and we'll just check the deviation. And 
I'm not reading round about 1.5, 1.6, something like that. So we'll just uh, adjust that if I can just look at my notes. And the deviation is the preset just here. And we'll just do the whistle test to make sure that that's in spec. That's actually sent it slightly over, so we'll just adjust that again. In fact, it's dirty, that's what the problem is. So we'll just clean it with the service hole switch cleaner. Waggle it around a bit and try again. Voila. That's now spot on. And then the RF meter, of course, now needs to read something round about uh, the 4 watts. Well, we know it's doing 3.2. And it's reading what? In fact, I look at the monitor, I'll probably be able to see it better. So we'll now just adjust that. It's not going to be far out. And the RF meter is the one next to the deviation control. The deviation control was there. The power meter is there. So I'm now just adjusting that so that it reads just under the 4 watts. And that concludes the transmit side of the Midland 2001.